An investigation is underway right now after sheriff's deputies opened fire on a man in Vista, sending him to the hospital. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. It happened this afternoon near the intersection of Kiva Lane and Portia Avenue. News 8's David Goffertson is there live tonight with what we know about what led up to the dangerous confrontation. David? We're out here in Vista, about a mile west of Vista High School, a pretty quiet residential neighborhood, 1500 block of Kiva Lane. This is where the shooting happened uh, this afternoon. One deputy opening fire. Let me step aside. You can see some of the evidence markers in the street that are marking the bullet casings fired by the deputy. It looks like multiple shots and a clip in the street. Now this all started around 12.30 in the afternoon at a 7-Eleven store on North Santa Fe Avenue. A customer there called 911 to report that a man with a knife was threatening him. The customer had locked himself in his car and the man started slashing his tires allegedly. Police deputies responded about a half hour later to the 1500 block of Kiva Lane here and that's when they spotted the man in the backyard in this residential neighborhood and they say he was carrying a knife and a rifle and at the time they did not know that the rifle was an air gun. A deputy opened fire multiple times and hit the individual described only at this point as a 20 year old Hispanic male. His name has not been given. Um, a uh, spokesperson for the San Diego County Sheriff's Department picks it up from there. He had he had a knife and he also what he had what appeared to be a rifle in his possession. So one of our deputies did discharge their firearm and struck the subject and that now at this point the person's been taken to a local hospital being treated for injuries. I don't have the details of the injuries at this time. Now, just moments ago, the sheriff's department released still photos of the air rifle the man was allegedly carrying and also the knife that the man was allegedly carrying. His condition is unknown at this time. Again, he's only described as uh, age 20, Hispanic male. Uh, as soon as we get more information on his condition, we'll bring it back to you. Uh, live in Vista, David Godfordson, back to you. And David, I believe there's a there was a home in the line of fire in that incident. Was anyone inside of it when this all happened? Yes, a lieutenant on the scene here told me there was a family inside that home. Unknown if any children were inside, but uh, the, the officer was in the middle of the street shooting in. The officer was in the middle of the street sh shooting in between houses into the backyard. So uh, all the bullet casings are in the street and in the backyard is where the suspect was allegedly handling a rifle that the deputy did not know at the time was an air rifle. It's a neighborhood that's definitely on edge right now. David Goffertson reporting live. Thanks, David. The San Diego Unified School Board is meeting right now to discuss a proposal for a COVID-19 vaccine mandate for all eligible students and staff. A vote on the issue is expected later tonight. That meeting is taking place virtually, but as Shannon Handy reports, dozens of people showed up outside district headquarters to have their voices heard. The public portion of that meeting started at 5 o'clock. Now, while several people signed up to weigh in virtually, others came here to get their point across. We're going to stand up. And As San Diego Unified School Board members gather virtually Tuesday, a large group of people stood outside district headquarters to protest tonight's vote. There aren't any long-term safety studies. We don't know what's going to happen to our kids if they get this vaccine. A smaller group was also there in support. We all want our kids to be safe and healthy, and I think that they they are miseducated and underinformed about the risks. At issue, a vaccine mandate for all eligible staff and students. Under the proposal, employees would be required to be fully vaccinated by December 20th. The mandate would, quote, be a condition of employment and a requirement for contracted services. For students, the district suggested phased approach would be as follows. Stage one, students age 16 and up would be required to be fully vaccinated by December 20th. Stage two, students age 12 and older would be required to be fully vaccinated at an undetermined date, depending on the FDA's full approval. 
In stage three, students age five and older would be required to be fully vaccinated at an undetermined date, depending on the FDA's full approval. Students who don't comply cannot participate in extracurricular activities or in-person learning. According to the district of its more than 120,000 staff and students, about 65% of all eligible students and 80% of eligible employees are already at least partially vaccinated. Board President Richard Barrera feels the mandate is necessary. The bottom line is this is the right thing to do uh, to keep people safe, to keep people healthy, and to keep students in school. Meanwhile, Sharon McKeeman, founder of the advocacy group Let Them Breathe, questions the legality of the proposed mandate. Additionally, she and others worry about other districts following suit. If approved, San Diego Unified would be the second largest district in the state behind Los Angeles Unified to do so. And so we, we feel that we need to take a stand here and that it has really broad implications even for the entire nation. We will have all the latest developments on tonight's vote on later editions of News 8. You can also go to CBS8.com for a link to that virtual meeting. Thanks, Shannon. The jury is deliberating whether to send convicted cop killer Jesse Gomez to death row. Prosecutors laid out final arguments today. Gomez was found guilty earlier this month of shooting and killing San Diego police officer Jonathan de Guzman and wounding his partner back in 2016. While there is a moratorium on executions in the state ordered by Governor Gavin Newsom, Gomez can still be sentenced and sent to death row. We are still waiting for police to release more information in the case of a mother and her two-year-old son who died in a fall from the third concourse at Peco Park over the weekend. We have heard from witnesses who do not want to be on camera. One man told us he didn't hear anyone scream and didn't even realize a child was in the woman's arms until after they landed. Other witnesses believe the child was falling over the rail when the mother tried to lean over and save him. Police are calling the deaths suspicious. In just two days, COVID-19 extended sick leave in California is set to expire. The governor signed the legislation back in March. Our political reporter Morgan Reiner joined in a meeting this morning with organizations from across the state who are urging the governor and lawmakers to act quickly. I asked the governor if he has any plans to extend the COVID sick leave program. His office told me they don't have any update, but that they've been working with Californians for a while to prepare them for programs like this one to end. Marcy Fukuroto works for Rainbow Services. We serve domestic violence survivors and their children. Services, she says, were made possible during the pandemic because of paid sick leave. Continuing to provide crisis intervention in our community um, and, of course, always being available to support our shelter families with things like child care, um, emergency needs, and personal support. And um, these are not jobs that can be performed remotely. Carolyn Denise Barlage is a grocery store employee. We have experienced numerous outbreaks at my store. The Public Health Alliance, United Food and Commercial Workers and more groups pleaded with the governor and the legislature to extend the program. Uh, more people are getting COVID right now than they were when we decided that we needed this as a protection and the governor signed the bill. Why not extend? Cal Matters reported one reason is that many companies can't afford the leave without federal tax credit to offset the cost, which is also set to expire. Given that the session has adjourned, it would need to be done in a special session if that road were to be the one taken. There are a few different paths that could be used to make this happen. Unfortunately, the state does not track how many people have used a paid sick leave in California. But to give you some perspective, a treasurer for a union that works with Disney employees said that about 3,000 of their employees got sick with COVID and used the paid sick leave. All right, Morgan, thanks. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria is in Washington, D.C. to lobby for more rental assistance for San Diego. Next week, the mayor will also ask the city council to authorize using $5 million in federal funds for local nonprofits to provide free legal resources to those facing eviction. This comes as the state's eviction moratorium is set to end this Thursday. Gloria is also meeting with the Biden administration and congressional leaders about the city's chronic homelessness problem and infrastructure. And our monthly segment, Your Questions Answered with Mayor Todd Gloria, will air next Monday on News 8 at 6 p.m. If you have something you would like to ask the mayor, just text your question to 858-571-8888.